So Nadine Shannon, tell me what it's been like being back in the sixth form properly after all this time. Amazing, like fun. being back at school. So much fun. Yeah. Seeing everybody, seeing your teachers again, seeing like people you went to school with, so, like the new year 12s coming, people you know, you can talk to. Just seeing you is really nice. So, so in terms of atmosphere then, do you feel like it's, it's sort of started well when new year yeah. 12? Yeah, definitely. It sort of just like feels the same as what it did pre lockdown. Yeah, and you know, thinking of lockdown and sort of pre-lockdown, can you can you describe what it was like in lockdown in terms of you know your education from from March onwards? Well, it was difficult. Like, don't get me wrong, but I felt very supported by all of like the staff and even like all of my friends and stuff. Like, we were all like messaging about all of the work and like what we'd done, so we could still have that sort of like classroom discussion almost. But no, there was a lot of support in the in the way of like video lessons and like live lessons on Teams and stuff like that. And even you could email anyone at any point and they'd always get back to you. Okay, so on Teams, you talk about sort of classroom discussion. That's a big part of sort of sixth form lessons, isn't it? What, yeah. Whatever subject yeah. you do. You know, and, and in terms of those sort of discussions, um, how deep does it, does it get? If you remember all that way back to kind of GCSE, does it feel very different from GCSE, sort of A-level discussions? Yeah, a bit. Well, we do history, so we have quite a lot of discussions anyway. Um, sometimes we go off, but into like relating like old history to nowadays and discussing things that is relevant to now, but linking it to everything we just learned and like really in-depth discussions, which we all like. So, in terms of being a history student, and you're both sort of history students, what what made you choose history? I'm quite passionate about it, and I always have been because my grandma is a history teacher, so she sort of cemented that love for it in me. So I don't, I, it was just like one of my favourite subjects at GCSE, even though I didn't have the best class because obviously they're all mixed ability. But it was just sort of what I wanted to do, and I did well at it at GCSE as well. So it was sort of like a natural progression. So that mixture of sort of passion and enthusiasm, and, yeah. and feeling like you're good at yeah, the subject. Yeah, definitely. Is that? Is that generally sort of... Yeah, I, have, I love the discussion side of it. Mm. So I've loved history since like primary school. I've loved learning about every, like from the Tudors we did that lower down and now we're learning it again at A level. I've loved it for years. It's very different to what my other subjects do. It's like, I classify as my fun subject, even though it's like two and a half hours of writing essays and, and that, like a 5,000 word coursework essay, but it's my fun subject. Okay, so fun of discussion and the fun of writing essays. So yeah, yeah. big part of A-level, whatever A-level you do will be discussion mm -hmm. and debate, a lot of yeah. heated debate I think, and, and also kind of essay writing. And if we think about when you were in year 11 and you were going about making all of your choices, you know, all these subjects you could potentially do, how did you go about actually making those choices for yourself? You mentioned passion and enthusiasm. Yeah. Was, was, that, was that the same for you, Maddie, in terms of you know, how you decided what you would do? Yeah, I picked the ones that I loved and that I was sort of good at as well, but not like the best. I wanted to improve and show that I could do it. So I picked biology, which I love, which is what I want to now go on to do further in my at university. And I originally picked chemistry, which I thought I was good at. But I eventually changed to another subject. I picked BTEC and did a year of BTEC, which really, really helped me get in, really going to help me get into university, which I hope it does. Right. And that was a really fun lesson. I, I think I picked fun ones that would help me in the future, but ones that I'm passionate about and I love to do because I don't want a subject that's boring. Okay, so it's about that sort of stimulating your brain. Yeah. 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 So with chemistry then, and you're really honest about that, you said that didn't kind of quite work out no. for you, but. That, but that, that wasn't the end of it, was it? You no, know? I still I still like chemistry. I still my granddad's a science teacher, he still teaches me chemistry. I still use the stuff I learnt in that four months doing chemistry that I do now in biology. So it still links to everything I do. Okay, so so students in year eleven right now, um, what sort of advice would you give them about how they might go about, you know, choosing those subjects, kind of making those decisions? Like, don't listen to what all of your teachers say that they think you should do, unless you're like honestly asking them for advice, because a lot of your teachers go, oh, you should do this subject because you're really good at it and stuff like that. But you need to pick what's right for you, whether that's in terms of what A-levels you need for your future and university and stuff like that, or if it's just the subjects that you're really, really passionate about, because that will then help you and enable you, because you'll want to do them and you'll want to come to sick one because you're doing the things you enjoy. Okay, so to sum that up so far then, you, you, you've got to do things you enjoy that you're motivated by, not what anyone else is motivated by, not by what anyone else thinks you should do, yeah. because you're the one doing it. 
Also, don't listen to what your friends like. Don't pick subjects that your friends are doing. Even if you really want to, you really want to be in the same classes as them. Because sometimes you can pick the subjects, but you're in totally different classes. Because sometimes we have double classes. But then you also just, you make more friends and new friends in those classes. So it doesn't matter what you do. Just okay. do what you want to do. And what about if you, you're thinking about doing subjects that you might not have had any experience of at, at GCSE? How do you go about working out and knowing that that might well, be the right subject for you? We both, did, we both do psychology, which obviously isn't a GCSE option at Friesland, but we sort of, you just have to listen to what the, like, the teachers are saying on the taster days. And obviously they might not have them because of COVID, but sort of the taster days were really good for that and sort of being able to pick and choose subjects that you hadn't done before. Um, also talk to people like year 12s, like you yeah. might know or year 13s because they can tell you about it, that's how I learn about They'll give you like an honest opinion whereas a teacher might try and give you like a more biased overview because they obviously want you to do their subject. Oh and with psychology they don't just throw you in, like it's like a, they just gradually get you into yeah. it no one else knows anything about it. Yeah, so, so we will do taster sessions, yeah. obviously COVID permitted, but that's very much part of the plan, um, just the same time of year as you guys did it. So, yeah. okay, so you get a sample of sort of lessons then, you then make your application. Um, what about sort of thinking about going elsewhere and, and looking at other places? Is it important to do your research and, and look into yeah. other sort of schools and colleges? Did you do that? Yeah, I went to two of those, I think, as well as Friesland. So to sort of see because obviously I knew that Friesland was definitely a viable option because obviously I've been here for five years previous and I knew that it was good teachers and they do the subjects that I wanted to do but I did look elsewhere just to see if like maybe going further afield would be something that I wanted to do but I just sort of came back to Friesland because it was where I knew and where I felt comfortable and I knew that they did the subjects that I wanted to do and I knew that I'd feel supported in like anything that I'd choose to do. Was that similar for you, Mo? I wanted somewhere where it was small. I like small class sizes. Mm -hmm. People knew me, so like the teachers I've had, I've had like throughout the school, so they know me. I just felt it was I was safer and yeah. supported here. Okay. So across the subjects that you do, you've got a real contrast in sort of numbers in your groups, yes. haven't you? Yes. So, so say for example, in your history group, how many students in your There's history group? There's six in history, yeah. but then I've got three in my art class, and then psychology is our biggest. Well, it's my biggest. 14 I think, but we've got yeah. two, there's two classes but it's 14 in ours and then, no I think, yeah 14, yeah. biology is a big one, Yeah. but it has been cut down. Okay, and in terms of in terms of the sort of feedback that you get then from teachers to help you, because obviously A-levels, applied courses, BTEC level yeah. 3 courses are challenging and hard, what's, what's that been like, are you, are you just left to sort of do it all on your own? No. Like even in psychology where it's like the biggest class that we've got, like Mr. Hall will still spend the time to go through all of our essays and like mark them and give us notes and sometimes we've had little voice yes, memos like of him talking through like our essays while he's marking them. So you do definitely feel supported even in the bigger class sizes. You never left sizes, you never left like your own devices. You can always ask questions as well, no yeah. matter what in any class. If you don't understand anything, just ask, they will come and teachers will come and help you. And, and what about the use of sort of Google Classroom and kind of new technologies? How's that? How's that been for you in sixth form? And, and you know, particularly during the, the time where you know, there was a lot more sort of virtual learning going on. Yeah, obviously it was really beneficial during lockdown because you knew that you could just send like any teacher just a message really, really quickly through Google Classroom. So that was definitely a benefit. And I feel like Friesland integrates the technology with the subjects really well because you can put all of your homework on Google Classroom and you can really easily contact your teachers on Google Classroom as well. So it's definitely beneficial. And also like put something on the classroom and like send to everybody as well. Yeah. So like I put stuff on there like stuff I found. Or like revision resources yes, that you've made that you think would be more beneficial to that we've done. Yeah, so you can articles. help each other yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that, I think that's a really quite important part of it, isn't it? Sort of collaborative learning. Yeah. You want to be there, and you can all work to work together to get the best for each other. And if you're like scared of asking a question on your classroom, a lot of them have private comment sections, yeah. which you can privately message people, yeah. which is so good. Mm -hmm. What about if um, you know students are wanting to sort of get a sense of a, a typical, if there is such a thing as a kind of normal day, a normal day as a student for yeah. you guys? What what does that look like? Um, Registration in the morning, we have with our form tutor very, very beneficial time. We um, chat yeah, we with them, we talk through like UCAS or yeah. UNIFROG Frog and stuff like that. <laughs> or anything that's happened at the weekend that we need to talk about, anything that's 
happened. And you see teachers a couple of times a week, it's yeah, not every day though, no. is it? No, yeah. last year, obviously proved COVID, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then this year it's only twice a week. But you still feel that support and there's like mentoring sessions, you will see your tutor at least like once a term, okay. for like a one-to-one. And in, and in terms of sort of roughly, and I know things are a little bit different at the moment, but they're sort of double lessons, um, how many hours a day would you spend kind of in lessons and then sort of devoting to sort of independent study? That's a bit different for me because I do four, yeah. so I'm obviously in school and doing in lessons a lot more than what Maddie is. I stay in school pretty much every day to try and get in my freeze to get yeah. work done because it's very beneficial. Um, so do you like to do your work yes. here then? I, d- I work I better here. To do it at home. No, I work better here. Okay, and you work better at home. Yeah, just because so, I have that, like that space. Yeah, so it's working out what's better for the individual, yeah. isn't it? You know, and you know, sort of getting that that balance right. You know, in a day. And what about you know? We just talked about study, study, study. What about time for a life outside? Do you love time to oh, do other well, things? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Like Maddie, you do all of your Musical drama and stuff, and stuff like that. Stuff out, um, okay. I'm part of a charity thing that's working with the NHS and things. Um, even in sixth form, if we've got nothing else to do, we've finished all of our work. We play card games. Yeah. yeah, we're a little community. We come together and we play card games. They teach us new card games. What's so like we love little food sessions. Maddie yes. brings in cakes. cakes a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do that. But okay. just so there's time to relax as well. Definitely, like yeah. I do choir once a week with a lot of people from Friesland, but there's also like more external people, like, and that's back post COVID now, so it's already fun. Mm-hmm. And then I volunteer at a brownie group once a week as well that we've still done during lockdown and stuff like that. So there is definitely time to do to have a life and to have like a social life and friends and maintain that as well as maintaining like good grades and all these stuff. So you can be busy and successful, can't yes. you? Yeah. So it's about managing that time. <laughs> it's just about balance, like finding what works for you, both study-wise and school-wise. Like I work better at home, so in my freeze I'll do a lot of card games or like we'll just sit and chat and stuff like that, whereas you'd more likely do work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then at home, obviously, I'm doing a lot more work than what other people okay. might be. And so what happens next? What's, what's the plan? Sort of touch woods, sort of after <laughs> levels, what are, you, Big question. what are you both looking to do? Go to university, mm-hmm. yeah, uni. definitely university, um, to study biomedical science and hopefully specialise after that, but I'll find out when I go to university <laughs> if I want to specialise. But I'm currently writing my uh, personal statement, it's uni. Yes, yeah. I know, I'm aware of that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> draft <laughs> after draft. Yeah. yeah, so close to finishing that. Okay, great. Yeah. And how about you, Sean? Uh, I want to do a history and politics. So I'm still looking into that. And, and in terms of your friends, would you say that you know the, there's a real wide range of sort of areas that people are looking to go into? It's not just yeah. about university, is it? I mean, not everyone's looking at university. Like looking we talk about it in history about how everyone's like what everyone's doing, and there's like university, really not a group of friends friends and stuff like that. Friendship. Like obviously Darcy wants to go to a conservatoire, and there's like other people that want to do different things as well. So it's nice to have that like variety because you know that you've got a lot of different options because different people that you know are doing those different things. And how do you find out about all these things then? Is it, you know, do you Google just... Classroom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Unifrog, and Unifrog's a really good resource. Resources that our teacher puts on. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, you feel like there's a sort of good preparation here. Yeah. yeah. Like You're just doing it on your own. the first day of year 12, stuff's on already like come and watch this vid- virtual open days and stuff. It can be a bit daunting almost, it can, like, yeah. from the get-go but, but actually if you research into it like Miss Dickinson our biology teacher last year she put on something about a work experience thing working in like pharmacy I think it was or something around that area yeah. and like I researched into it and stuff like when teachers put stuff on that it's really nice that they're showing support to us yeah they want us to Achieve, achieve what we wanted to do is really nice. Oh, that's really good to hear. So, in terms of in terms of the two of you, you are sort of aspiring chairs of our kind of student committee. Yes, right? yes. fingers um, crossed. Trust in terms of, sort of student voice, that's you know that is important, isn't it? Definitely. And do, and do you feel like you are heard and, and listened to? Yeah. Yes. And especially when we get the chair and like all the committee up and running, like it will definitely be a lot more because we've not had that as much during lockdown because we've just not been in school, so there's not been a lot we of had, things to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we had a couple of meetings last year, but then yeah, yeah. And it will change, didn't it? Didn't yeah. change. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so, ju- so just to finish this afternoon, then again, if you, you cast your minds back to sort of year eleven and where you were and thinking about what to do for your next steps, 
if there was one piece of advice you would offer to, to, to year 11 students, what, what would that be? Big question. Um, do what makes you happy. That's do very what, good. Don't do what anything like everyone else wants you to do. Do what makes you happy because it's your life and no one else's life. You decide what you want to do. What Maddie says, like it's it's what you're going to be doing for two years, and then if you choose to do it after that, like you'll be doing it for three plus years. So it's definitely you've got to invest time into figuring out what you want to do. I did so many pros and cons lists about like every subject and every place I visited. So it's just about like picking what feels right, almost. Also, have fun. Six form is fun. It's yeah, a fun place to be. <laughs> and finally, 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 then casting your your time back to to year 11, if you were to give students tips on how to go about year 11 in preparation for the next steps, what well, the do's and don'ts do you think? I mean it's different for everyone because everyone yeah. learns in different ways and therefore revision is like such a wide variety of different things that you can do. I mean I benefited from like big posters and mind maps and recording either myself saying something or like I'd get one of my friends or my sister to record things for me so I could listen to that because I'm quite like a auditory learner yes. um, so I quite benefited from that and like my big mind maps I literally filled the wall in my bedroom just with everything that I had of mind maps up which is a lot of English and history but also it don't require all the time yeah you still need to maintain that balance I did because, musical like yeah I started my musical theatre during year 11 and that was the best thing I ever did like pick a new hobby sometimes it could take your mind off things just find things that you know will help relax you and balance it out yeah, a bit because you, you should be all working time. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank right. you.